Don't miss the NBA in-season tournament knockout rounds on ESPN and TNT. And tune in to ABC December 9th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern to see who will win the first ever NBA Cup. Welcome to Odds Maker, where we're going to predict which game will win Game of the Year at the Game Awards, tell you why, and then in the end, put our imaginary money where our mouths are. Here's how this works. Our team of gaming experts took into consideration a number of categories, factors, variables to determine each of the six nominees for Game of the Year's odds of winning. Now, a quick explainer on how odds work. The number on the left is how much money you'd win if you bet the number on the right. So 10 to 1 odds means win $10 for every $1 you bet. The bigger the left-hand number is, the more of a long shot we think its chances of winning are. Now let's dive into the games themselves from least to most likely to win. Up first is Resident Evil 4 Remake from Capcom with 25 to 1 odds. Now, there are a number of factors that make this least likely to win. However, the GameSpot score was 10 out of 10, which, Kurt, you gave it in the review. So why do you think that this game is such a long shot? I think it's easy to look at something that's called a remake and sort of denounce it in that way uh, with this sort of expectation that it's just something that has already existed that's been remade. Now, games have been remade over and over and over again, and sometimes they're just kind of given a facelift. But the difference with Resident Evil 4 Remake, it's a game that is built alongside and right next to the original, not on top of it, not redoing it. And I think just as Resident Evil 2 Remake went on to inspire games and adapt mechanics and games that have followed it, I think the same thing will happen with Resident Evil 4 Remake. And besides, Leon Kennedy's triceps are remarkable, and he's just so cute when he brushes the rain off of him. It's Ugh, just, that's and enough. his hair, it's so good. Look enough. at all those pixels. <laughs> Dave, this is the only one of the nominated games whose fandom wiki reached the number one trending spot across all of the gaming wikis in the week following its release. So these odds seem maybe a little low. Yeah, I think with the whole wiki aspect is because there's so much to find in the game. There's so much to do. There's a lot of secrets and hidden things and then a lot you can unlock as well. So I can understand why the wiki would do so well. But that said, as Kurt kind of touched on, it's the whole remake factor. And even though it's so good and does so many things so well, at the end of the day, it still has the same beats as the original game um, compared to RE2 Remake. It's still the same prime gameplay, whereas RE2 Remake did change it to have incorporate the RE4 style into it. So I think ultimately that's going to hurt it. And just the fact that people think of it as a remake. Well, speaking of retreading familiar territory, up next on the list, we have Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac with 20 to 1 odds. Now, Insomniac is very beloved for these games, but they haven't actually scored a win. The previous Spider-Man title did not win Game of the Year in its release year. So, Dave, do you think that these that factors into the odds here? Yeah, I mean, I guess when you look at the year that Spider-Man came out, it was up against God of War and it was up against Red Dead Redemption 2. So that was a pretty tough year. But then this year, at the same time, it's up against what? Alan Wake 2, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3. So it's also other heavy hitters. Spider-Man 2 is a sequel. And really, it's not that much different than the original Spider-Man. I know it did score. It did review higher in general. I think GameSpot reviewed it lower. But in general, the Metacritic's actually higher than the original Spider-Man but it's still not that high. And I think it's a lower overall score than the rest of the game. So I just, I think it makes sense to be here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Kurt, this was the lowest scoring game on GameSpot that got a Game of the Year nomination, scoring only an eight where everything else was a nine or better. So why does Spider-Man 2 have better odds than RE4 for taking the win? I mean, I think Resident Evil 4 is a remake uh, or a reimagining. Spider-Man 2 <laughs> is a sequel. It's a sequel, however, that doesn't necessarily reinvent the wheel or re-innovate ways in which the game had done so back in 2018. Also, additionally, like as, as Dave had mentioned, it is going up against a lot of games this year, just as it did then, that are remarkable. And I think that's the, the very problem in a way that Spider-Man 2 is a great game, but I would not consider it something to be remarked upon that will be something that will change the way in which we view and look at games going forward in the future. Well, if we're looking at games that uh, definitely innovated, interestingly enough, I would say Super Mario Brothers Wonder falls into that category. I mean, Wonder's literally in the title, which was a bold move on Nintendo's part. This has got 15 to one odds. Kurt, 
we didn't even know that this game existed until June of this year. Do you think that that had any effect, either positively or negatively, on these odds? We also didn't know in June that we were going to be turning into an elephant and saying, wow, he's <laughs> out. Uh, when, uh, so I, I, do I think that really has any, any play at it? No. I think the most important part about Super Mario Wonder is that it is the thing that we have needed for that franchise, specifically the 2D Mario games, for very for a very, very long time, and that is innovation. It is taking everything that we know and expect from a Super Mario game and tearing the rug from underneath it. In short, it's a game where you can say, wowie zowie, when you turn into an elephant, you shoot bubbles and you go on whimsy benders. Come on. Dave, it received a nine out of 10 on GameSpot and has a meta score of 92. So mm. it's a very beloved game. Why do you think its chances are only kind of middling here? Look. 2D platform games are probably my favorite genre, but the genre has been around for so long and so many things have been done that to me, it has to be a game that truly stands out as one of the best platform games of all time, like better than the Super Mario World, better than Super Mario Brothers 3, better than a lot of those classics for it to really probably win that spot. Yes, it's a fun game. Yes, you say wowie zowie. And yes, I do think Wonder is the best 2D platform Mario game since Super Mario World, but I don't think it tops it. And I think at the end of the day, that's what's going to make it not have as high of a chance as some of these other games out there. It has to be one of the games that where you say like, this is the best 2D platform game I played or one of the best ever. Well, while we're on the topic of familiar territory, next up on our list is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, also from Nintendo with six to one odds. Early in the year, this really seemed like a standout. I think a lot of people would have even called this a shoe in for Game of the Year. It sold 25 million copies, which is more than twice the amount of the next closest nominated game in terms of sales. So why does this game not crack the top two? At the end of the day, it still has that sequel factor that we talked about with Spider-Man 2, and it really doesn't change that much in some ways. Like, yes, the mechanics of how you play the game are different. I'm, like, I, I'm saying it is, so don't, don't say I didn't say that. But it's still Get the in same. The comments. Yeah, please. <laughs> but it's still the same map as the original game. And ultimately, while there's a higher level, there's the sky you're exploring and the underground that you're exploring, it's still the same map. So you're discovering a lot of the same things as the original game. And that discovery is what made Breath of the Wild stand out so much in a lot of ways that Tears of the Kingdom, to my mind, doesn't compete with that. And it's the same gameplay, ultimately, and discovery that we've seen before. It's not as innovative as the original game. Sure, and Nintendo as a studio has won 18 game awards during the show's history with Breath of the Wild accounting for three of those, including Game of the Year. So Kurt, do you think that this is lacking that wow factor of Breath of the Wild, which is putting it at number three in our odds? It's easy to say that it's the same map and there's more that's been added to it. Uh, and I don't entirely think that announces what makes Tears of the Kingdom special. But I think the thing that is working against it is that it is more or less Breath of the Wild with more stuff. And it's kind of that off factor that's been lost. And though this may come off negative, I, I kind of would be more inclined to call it Sigh of the Wild. I don't know if it is reshaping the ground as it once did in such a way that makes it stand above anything else this year. Well, certainly in the realm of causing shock, awe, and excitement, and just surprising the player at every single turn, the next game up we have is Alan Wake two from Remedy with three to one odds. Now, Kurt, Alan Wake 2 was the talk of the town during Summer Games Fest 2023. How do you think that factors into it potentially taking home the big award? The one thing that I think we can take away from Summer Game Fest in particular and that play days is that it was something that impacted the press, like the, the critics in the media that was playing something and saw something that was truly and genuinely innovative. I don't know if that's going to play a major factor, but I think it's quite telling that in a year of incredible games that are all founded on usually existing IPs, and I know Alan Wake 2 is an existing IP, this is one that is a standout because it is only one game existed 13 years ago. It was a cult classic and has seemingly emerged from the dark place <laughs> 13 years later as something completely new, something that completely reshapes, remolds, and stands far beyond what the original ever was. And as it is, it's this sort of celebration of not just games, but I think art and creativity on every level and every medium that just makes this something that has not ever been done or attempted with as clear of a vision or has affected those who have played it in the way that it has 
versus the other games that are on the roster. It's definitely a popular choice with critics. As a matter of fact, it won the Critics' Choice at Golden Joysticks. But Dave, I wonder, do you think that has a positive bearing on this potentially winning Game of the Year, even though it's also a sequel, which we said was working against both mm. Spider-Man and Zelda? I was looking into it, and the Golden Joystick Awards don't seem to have very much bearings on how well a game will do at the Game Awards. As far as the sequel factor goes, I think it has to do with what Kurt said, where the last game was 13 years ago. It was a very, very different game. So it doesn't feel like a sequel in a lot of ways, even though it's a continuation of the story. Gameplay-wise, it's a different game. It's just completely new feeling, and it's very innovative in a lot of ways. It does transmedia in a way I haven't seen done before this well. Uh, and I think that's what makes it stand out to so many people is how well it does what it's doing and how different it feels than a lot of things you might have played before. And again, I think that there is room here for discussing a game just doing a tried and true formula and really perfecting it, which is the case with Baldur's Gate 3, which we have tied with Alan Wake 2 with three to one odds of taking home that game of the year. Now, Dave, with a meta score of 96, this is tied with Tears of the Kingdom for highest rated nominated game. So do you think that the universal acclaim of this versus Alan Wake 2 is gonna give it the edge? Yeah, I don't think the familiarity of Baldur's Gate is as much because a lot of people seem to be introduced to Baldur's Gate through Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> but I think that speaks to just how good this game is. And it does Dungeons and Dragons so well. And this is the game that takes it and runs with it. And I think that Metacritic score at, is going to also be important. Um, as much as I love Alan Wake 2, I did a Twitter poll and at least according to my Twitter followers, the 350 people who responded, which is, is representative and indicative of everybody in the world. <laughs> I mean, that's like definitely indicative. Baldur's Gate 3 got 50% whereas like of what people thought should win, whereas Ellen Wake 2 got 15%. And I, I have a feeling that's gonna translate to people voting as well. Now, interesting to note, Kurt, the fandom Baldur's Gate 3 wiki is the second most active of all of the nominated games here at number 51 overall, just behind Resident Evil, which is at number 49. Does the overall brand recognition and engagement amongst fans make it more likely to take home top honors? D&D &D is an existing IP that if you asked your mom if, you knew, if she knew what D&D &D was, she would likely say yes. Uh, and I don't necessarily think that would be the thing that would give it the ultimate edge. The edge would, would come from the fact that the game doesn't tell you no, that it is this it is permutations upon permutations that's done to such an impossible degree that it feels like that it's amazing to play a game that simply will allow you to do whatever you want. But I also think that's the very same reason that might even stunt other games from ever trying to live up to it. I think Alan Wake 2, on the other hand, can give foundation for allowing developers to be more daring in what they do, which is something we don't get to see in the main AAA space. Okay, gentlemen, now it's time to put your imaginary money where your actual mouths are. Let's say that I've given you each 100 V-Bucks or Gil or whatever the currency is that they use in Honkai Star Rail to buy new waifus. What are you going all in on? I'm so torn between Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. We're literally, I, I mean, literally that's yeah. <laughs> what we're saying here. I know, that's why it's the same odds. Um, I'm gonna go with, look, I'm going all in with my Twitter followers. Please <laughs> have done me right. All 350 of you who voted. Uh, you're you're the ones who are telling me, even though I, I honestly, I hope Alan Wake 2 goes, wins personally, but I'm gonna put all my money on Baldur's Gate 3. I, I believe that Baldur's Gate 3 could possibly be the safer bet, but I'm going to go with creativity and and no! my and my and my, uh, my my love and it's not even my personal love and dreams of just the spooky and weird and fantastical. I'm putting it all in on Alan Wake 2. And I'm gonna put it all in on Resident Evil 4 because Gun rhymes with fun for reasons, stranger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it for Odds Maker. Find out which one of us is the most theoretically wealthy when the Game Awards air on Thursday, December 7th, 2023.